Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to work with a terminal or the command line on your Macintosh. I'll make another video uh, for Windows machines because the commands are a little bit different. Um, so let's just jump right into it. This is going to be one of the most important things you learn as a developer. It's going to make you more effective and efficient uh, with working with, with your computer in general. So let's get right into it. How do you open up the terminal? Well, I use my spotlight search, which is command space, and I type terminal and then hit enter. Uh, you can see I keep my terminal docked over here, which you could also do on a Mac. Inside of this, um, if you've never seen it before, it may look a little cryptic and seem intimidating, but I assure you, just practice a little bit every day, watch this video a few times, and you'll be super confident and comfortable with working here in the, in the terminal. You'll be uh, more effective and efficient for it. First thing you need to know is where the heck are you? So when you open up a terminal, it's going to be located somewhere on your computer. Uh, and to find out where, you type PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. You can see that I'm located in the directory users slash murfdog, which is a folder structure of my computer, and this is my user that I'm logged in as. Also, you can see right here that little tilde sign, the squiggly line, uh, shows that I'm at my user level. Okay, PWD shows me where I am, but if I'm in a folder or a directory, uh, what else is in there with me? Well, we can list the contents using the ls command for list. And that shows us everything that's also in this same folder. You can see applications, you can see desktop, documents, downloads, a lot of typical things that you'll see on a typical computer, plus some personal stuff I have. Let's say we want to move to our desktop, for example, which is exactly what you'll see right here. To change directory, we use the cd command for change directory, and then you type where you want to go, which would be desktop. You can use tab to autocomplete wherever your uh, destination is that you're typing, uh, and hit enter, and you'll be a lot quicker that way. So now we use pwd, and you can see that we've moved from users murfdog to users murfdog desktop. All right, let's use the ls command and see what's on the desktop. It prints nothing out because I don't keep anything on my desktop. So let's put something there so that we can verify this. Touch is how you create a file on a Macintosh. Touch and then the name of the file. So let's call it myfile.txt. Hit enter. Click the desktop to refresh the screen and you can see right over here myfile.txt which is exactly what we just made right here in the terminal. Okay, now that we're on the desktop and we've created something, you can hit ls again, and you can see this time it lists out my file. Great. All right, guys, time to keep moving on. Let's learn another command. You can open the file that you just created by saying open my file.txt, use tab for autocomplete, hit enter, and it opens right up in a text edit widget. Um, if you have your default text application set to something else it might not open in text edit uh, but that's not a big deal what well, it will always open your file in whatever the default application is you can see the file is empty and that's exactly the way it is because we just created an empty file now um, sometimes you'll want to close a window and a command on a Mac to close most windows for almost any application would be command W and that closes that right there uh, command W also will close your terminal like this uh, to get it back, of course, just uh, spotlight search, which is command space and type terminal, and you've got your terminal back. One thing to note, though, is you do reset um, to uh, you know your base user working directory. So PWD shows that I'm back at MurfDog, and we were on the desktop. So let's CD, which is change directory, to the desktop. Tab for autocomplete and hit enter and PWD to prove to ourselves that we are back at the desktop. Now when we ls list our commands, uh, list our contents, excuse me, uh, list the contents of the current directory, we're going to see myfile.txt, which is right there. Okay, we saw how to create and open a file, but let's see how to remove a file. Let me caution you, this is one of the most dangerous commands uh, that you will learn in the 
terminal. This can delete things uh, that are important and you can lose them forever. So before you use this command, make sure you know exactly what you're deleting. The, com the command is rm and then you want to give a space and type the name of what you want to delete. We will delete myfile.txt and we're going to hit enter and it is gone forever. It doesn't go into your trash can, you can't retrieve it. You can open up your trash can and see that it's gone. Be incredibly cautious when using RM because you could easily delete something very important and there's no way to get it back. With that being said, let's move on. We've learned how to create a file. Let's create a folder. It's a different command. It's mkdir, which stands for make directory. Uh, we call folders directories. So mkdir and then very similar to the touch command, we're just going to give it a name. We're going to create a folder or a directory called my folder right here where we are, which is our working directory of the desktop. Now when we ls or list everything on the desktop, we're going to see my folder is right there where we created it. Okay guys, I hope you're getting the hang of this. You're just at the tip of the iceberg about you know how powerful the terminal is. Uh, hang in hang in there. We're going to get to some really exciting stuff Okay, so we have learned how to create a folder Let's once again learn a very dangerous command, but uh, a very necessary command called uh, rmdir uh, Which allows you to delete a folder Caution exact same caution that I gave you with rm This can delete anything on your computer and it's incredibly dangerous because you will never be able to get it back so once you hit enter this bad boy is going to be gone for good. It's not in your trash can. You can never recover it. So be incredibly cautious, please. Okay, that being said, make dir. Oh, you know what? Let me show you something really cool. You can just, if you wanna make that folder again, you can just use the up and down arrows to navigate through past commands. Um, so hit that up two or three times back to make their my folder and it will create that folder again just by running that command. Okay, so now that we've created a folder, let's do some fancy stuff. Let's create a file. Let's make a file right here and that is just a visual glitch. Uh, it's a bug on a Mac. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, okay, so it creates a file right here and it's got a folder. Let's move our file into our folder. We're going to use the mv command, which is move. We're going to use move my file into my folder. You can use tab for autocomplete and hit enter when you're done, and boom, we have uh, successfully moved my file into my folder. Now we can move my file back out of my folder using the mv command, and we're going to say my folder, my file and then space, and then the place we're going to move it back to is actually just the name of the file. So we'll just call it um, my uh, file.txt, and that's going to move it right back to our current working directory. And you can see right there, there's our file. It's no longer in my folder, and it is back on the desktop. When we run ls, we're going to see that our folder and our file are right there on the desktop. Okay guys, that's move. Let me show you another command, copy, that does a similar thing. And we're gonna copy my file into my folder. CP copies this file into this destination. You hit enter and you'll see that my file stayed there. Unlike when we used move, uh, it actually moved the whole thing. Now we've just created a copy of it and placed it right in here. Okay, let's, let's show you something else. We can ls the content of my folder without going in there. So you can uh, extend this command into this folder and you can see that myfile.txt is inside of that folder. Um, let's, let's rename this myfile.txt because these are a little confusing having the same names. So first let's rm uh, my file out here so it's not confusing anymore. Uh, and in here you can see it's still there. 
Uh, let's rename that. So we're going to use MV my folder, uh, my file, and let's call it, let's leave it inside of my folder. Um, so, but just call it something different. Uh, renamed.txt. Um, and now when we ls whatever's in my folder, you're going to see that it's called renamed.txt. You can verify that by clicking on it. So if you ever want to rename anything, uh, you'll just use your mv command, give the location to the original file, and then give the location to whatever you want it to be named. Alright guys, that's some powerful stuff, but let's keep going, there's so much more. Another really awesome command you can use is clear. It gets rid of everything that's on this current screen, although you can still access it by scrolling up, uh, either with your arrow keys or your mouse. But clear is a wonderful command to just give you a fresh slate. Okay, if you ever have a process running in your terminal, you can stop it with control C. It also adds a new line, um, as you can see. And you can get rid of those with the clear command. So control C is an easy way to kill any process that's running right there. All right, command W, I already showed you that, that closes the window. Okay, if you've got Python installed, which if you're running a Mac, you already have Python installed, whether you know it or not. All Macs come with Python installed by default, and so if you type the word Python in your command line, you'll see that a version of Python 2 is started. This is called a shell and uh, this is a Python 2 shell. Now remember, in this course, uh, on this whole channel on YouTube, uh, we're gonna be working with Python 3, so there's no reason to be in this Python 2 editor, uh, excuse me, this Python 2 shell at the moment, uh, and you can quit it by typing quit with open and closing parentheses. Hit enter and you're back in your terminal. So, but if you really do want to start Python 3, uh, you just type Python 3. Hit enter, and now you can see the version of Python is a version of Python 3. Now we've got a version of our Python 3 shell running, and we can start typing Python code right here in our terminal. So let's do some just easy stuff like print hello world from the terminal shell. And we'll go ahead and run that, and it prints hello world from the terminal shell. Um, you can create a variable x equals 56, and say uh, print x times 3, and you can see it's evaluating Python code. This is called a read evaluate print loop inside of the shell, and what it does is it reads whatever you typed, it evaluates whatever you typed, and then it prints out the result, and then it loops back around and does it again. So this is a great place to mess around while you're learning Python, but you can also do some really advanced stuff in here. So we will come back to working in the Python shell a little bit later. Right now, I just want to keep focused on the real important commands. So we'll quit out of that Python shell, and we'll clear this so that we have a fresh slate. Okay, another exciting thing that we can do here is not only run Python right in here, but we can actually run a Python file from right here. So let's create a Python file. We are on our desktop, so we'll touch um, new, well, let's call this hello.py. The .py extension uh, tells the computer that we want to create a Python file. That creates a Python file right here and you can open it up. Um, I have mine set up to open uh, Python files in Visual Studio Code, and I'll show you how to add that command. But you can say code hello.py and hit enter, and you can see it opens my Visual Studio Code editor with this hello.py file. I'm gonna write a little bit of code in here so we can see how this works. Hello from the file. Now I'm going to save that, and I'm going to close that, and now we ls and make sure we can see hello.py, we'll run Python 3, we will run hello.py. So you use uh, the version of Python you want to run and the name of the Python file, hit enter, and you can see it runs that Python file right from the terminal. Pretty awesome. The output from this file gets printed right here in this command line. This is a super useful tool, and I use this all the time when I'm running code in development. 
Okay, guys, we are getting so close to the end. There are a few other things that I'm not going to really go into right now that we will encounter later as we get into some Python tutorials because they will make more sense with a little more context. Uh, one thing I do want to show you is if you do install Visual Studio Code and you want to add uh, this command code hello.py, you have to manually enable that. Um, and the way to do that is command shift P from inside of code. And it's going to be this default one shell command install code command in path. And what that does is it installs code as a keyword in your command line terminal um, so that you can start using code as a command because by default that's not a command in your terminal. Okay, um, and what I use that for is things like this, you know, to open up that file in code. Um, and you can do things like opening up a whole folder with a project of hundreds of Python files and you can just use the command uh, code and open up that whole folder and it's just really fantastic. Um, before we move on uh, to finish this video, let me show you this cheat sheet. You can find this um, by searching terminal commands Mac on the internet and go to this GitHub. I will drop a link for this in the description for this video so you guys can go grab it. Uh, and this awesome user Ono from Berlin has created this uh, for the community. And what's cool is it's translated into a lot of languages, so maybe you're more comfortable in another uh, language, you can find it there. Um, but this shows all of these awesome commands that you can use in your terminal on a Mac. I would recommend printing this off or at least copying down um, some of the important ones um, because if you start using these every day and start learning these, you are going to be so powerful as a programmer. Um, let me just tell you, this terminal interface gives you power like you've never seen it before and you'll be able to manipulate your computer to do some really incredible things with total ease and grace and let me tell you when you go looking for a job as a developer you're gonna find employers are really impressed with your command of the command line uh, no pun intended if you can manipulate that command line like a pro they're gonna be so impressed and know that they're hiring someone who really understands how a computer works so this is really valuable for you um, I believe as a skill uh, for a developer in pretty much any language, but specifically Python, because as a Python developer, you may be running a lot of uh, scripts and doing a lot of uh, system administration stuff and you know doing some really cool stuff. Uh, and a lot of it's gonna be so much easier if you're working with the command line. You can see a lot of these commands right here um, are stuff that we've already worked with. So make dir, uh, rm dir, rm, uh, this is the most dangerous command, um, and I just caution you, please don't use that unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, but you can do things like, you know, read contents from a file, append output to a file, um, you know, work with your clipboard, you can, you know, we did a lot of these commands. Um, so I just want to show you this. I'm going to put a link for this. I highly recommend you print it off download it and study it and use these commands every day. You will be amazed at how this changes your experience as a developer. Okay, the last thing I want to show you before we close this video off is probably the funniest terminal command uh, that I found. Um, one of my favorites and I'm going to use it as a sign off for this video. You can get your terminal to say anything you want. So here it goes. Please like and subscribe. Uh, had my sound off. Let's try that again. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And there you have it, guys. That's how you can become a master of the terminal command line on a Macintosh. Stay tuned for more videos. And like I said, I'll have a video up for how to do these kinds of things on a Windows machine, too. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your view. And I'll see you in the next video.